Well, welcome back. Back in studio once again is Tony Bland. This time it is allergies. Hey, Tony. Oh, there. How are you doing? Not too bad. How about you? Very good. Very good. Awesome. So, allergies. Yeah. How well, do they affect the eyes? Well, it's interesting. You know, most people, you know, when they have allergic issues with their eyes, you know, it's um, you know itchy and, and watery and red and and, and often um, you know just generally irritated. And the, and and the key um, symptom is always itchiness as well. So. Yeah, see a lot of people wanting to rub their eyes and so on, which we'll get to in a minute, but that yep. often makes it worse. Um, so what happens with allergy in your eyes, it's kind of like a, an overaction of your immune system, if you like. Um, over, your, over the white of your eye and on the inside of your eyelids, there's a clear layer called the conjunctiva, which is where conjunctivitis comes from. And that's got lots of mast cells in it. And what happens when, when uh, an allergy occurs is your immune system kind of overreacts and releases the histamine out of these mast cells and that's what leads to the symptoms that you often see associated with allergy and, and there's also mast cells on the inside of your nose too so when you get um, sneezing and so on associated with allergy it's all the same kind of idea. So what are the main allergies that affect your eyes? Any, pretty much anything? There are, yeah, there are quite a lot of things that can affect your eyes. Um, the main ones, uh, you know, in terms of seasonal allergies are, are coming up, and that's why I thought it'd be good to talk about it now, is that uh, coming into spring, so, so mainly September and a bit into October, and even just starting now, I noticed on the weekend the pine pollens just started, so that's sort of one of the first pollens that comes out, and then we know that all the spring pollens are going to follow. There's a, there's a burst of the eyes around about then, and then there's another seasonal burst, uh, usually around about Christmas, either side of Christmas, um, with the grass pollens that then come out as well. And a lot of people uh, you know, sneeze a lot and it affects their eyes too. But you can, be, you can have allergic reactions to a whole raft of just different day-to-day -day things like, like cats and, and, and animals and uh, dust mites and dust mite allergens and so on as well. So they can pretty much occur any time. And it can affect anywhere because I know when I have allergies, my nose is the one to start, and I don't yep. think I've ever had any problems with my eyes. What different things show up? It, it varies from person to person. So yeah, for sure, you know, like yourself, it can affect your nose and not your eyes, and the other way around too. So, you know, there are different ways that it affects people for sure. So the com similar, similar sort of common reactions. So what sort of things? Uh, my eyes might get itchy. Watery. Yeah, so like I talked about itchy, watery, and redness. Um, the main thing is usually the itchiness is the hallmark sign. Like if you've got itchy eyes, you know, nine times out of ten, that's an allergy. Whereas if other things are going on, it can be other things like maybe infection or other things too. So usual story, recommend getting it checked properly to, to get the differential if you like. And rubbing the eyes, it feels good? Yeah, but it always makes it worse <laughs> in the long run. Well, one of the main things that goes on is it generates a lot of heat. You know, often too, people's eyes feel kind of hot and, and uncomfortable. So. And when you think about it, in the way rubbing them makes it worse because it's just generating more heat and actually just speeds up the process. So when it comes to the treatment side of things, you actually want to do the opposite. So we tend to work on trying to cool the eyes instead. And so how can we cool our eyes? Well, the, the, one of the underlying issues with um, your eyes with allergy is often they're a little dry. So if pollen and dust and allergens are getting in there and the tear film's not uh, very adequate, those things aren't being flushed out of the eye very quickly and so they're hanging around longer and more likely to cause allergic responses. So the best treatment is just use lubricants first, which have no medication. They're just a salt water solution but with a thickener to soothe and comfort the eyes. And you, to cool the eye down, what you do is keep them in the fridge. And uh, Your eyes? That, you keep them in the yeah, fridge? Yeah, you can keep your eyes in the fridge. But putting the lubricant in there too is really helpful. And the <laughs> idea is, is that with the lubricant, when it's cooler, it's easier to tell when you've got it in there, but far more soothing and more effective. So that's the number one treatment. And because there's no medication, you can use it as often as you need to during the day. And the other one that works well is cool compresses. So just a face cloth under cold water, just rolling it up and holding against the surface of the eye. And you know, for probably two thirds of people, uh, that's the most effective treatment is just lubrication and cooling and soothing. And then where possible, which is not always practical, trying to avoid the source of the allergen as well. So obviously with pollen, trying to avoid the areas where it's worse. Maybe use sunglasses and a hat to, to slow down the pollen getting in your eyes. And then obviously if it's other things, looking at for those sources and trying to do something about it. And you can have proper allergy tests to, you know, if, if it's not apparent what the cause may be. So for, for three quarters of the people, two thirds of the people, that's you know, the main uh, fundamental treatments that work really well. And then in a few situations, again, maybe a quarter to a third, that's not really enough. So then we go to more medicated issues where you can get um, 
ocular or eye antihistamines and other medications. And I mentioned a couple um, called Patanol and Zatidin, like that are new generation medications that are a preventer as well as a treatment. Whereas some of the old generations still work pretty well, but uh, are usually just one or the other, so they need to be used a little more frequently. So what I usually suggest to people is save those um, in the background, you know, if the main treat, you know, the main simple treatments aren't working first. So uh, if we have any problems, just come in and see you. You can guide us in the right. Yeah, direction. usually what we suggest again is you want to make sure you're not, you know, you're getting the right uh, treatment and that we're treating the right condition as well. You know, because there are other things that can cause, for example, a red eye or a watery eye. So again, we just want to make sure that we're doing the right things. Thank you very much, Tony, and we'll see you again next time. Oh, you're welcome. And that's all we've got time for for tonight's City News. If you have any news or events you'd like to share with us, you can call us on 34888984 or email news at tv.tadua.co.nz. We'll catch you back here again tomorrow night. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.